please do cat scratch. I actually used to play this game with my sisters all the time when we were younger and most of the time it actually worked. So cat scratch is a paranormal game which basically you're supposed to summon some sort of spirit to scratch you along your back. To play the game you need at least two people. So one person sits crisscross applesauce and the other person lays their head in that person's lap. The person who's sitting up then starts rubbing the other person's temples and telling them one of the cat scratch stories. There are a few different variations of stories that go along with this game, but I'll tell you the most popular one. So the story goes like, there was once an old lady who owned a cat. The cat was very nice. It would meow and purr. One day the cat got hit by a car and died. Cat scratch, cat scratch, cat scratch. The old lady got a new cat. This cat was very mean. It hissed and clawed. Cat scratch, cat scratch, cat scratch. I'm running out of time, but follow for part two. Cat scratch, part two. So the story continues like, one day that cat died. The lady decided not to get any more cats. Cat scratch, cat scratch, cat scratch. After you get done telling the story, the person who you're telling it to is supposed to sit up, check their back, and there is supposed to be big cat scratch marks along their back. You're not supposed to feel any pain, but the scratch marks do show up. When I was little, me and my sisters used a different, way longer story just to make it scarier, and it worked. Cat scratches did show up on our backs. I don't suggest any of you guys try this though because it can open portals for entities and whatnot to come through. It's pretty dangerous to give an entity permission to physically touch you in any way. But have any of you tried this though? And if you did, did it work? Can you do red door, yellow door? So this one's another creepy game that's supposed to put you in a trance, but to me, it sounds more like astral projection. I don't suggest you try this. You need at least two players to play this game. The first person sits crisscross applesauce on the floor and the next person lays down and lays their head in that person's lap. The person laying down closes their eyes and raises their hands up into the air. The person who's sitting up then starts rubbing that person's temples and chanting red door, yellow door, any other color door. You chant this red door, yellow door, any other color door until the person puts their hands down. And when they put their hands down, that signifies that they've started envisioning doors in their head. This means they've fallen into the trance. The person sitting up will then ask you questions, getting you to describe your surroundings and what you see. The guide can tell you to open doors and go into the rooms behind the door, but there may be evil things behind the doors that you don't want to encounter. Follow for part two. Red door, yellow door, part two. So the guides can tell you to open doors and go into the rooms, but if you see certain things, it's best if you just turn around and leave. The rules are as follows. If you see people in the rooms, don't talk to them. If you see clocks in any of the rooms, turn around and leave immediately because the clocks can trap you. They say if you see a man in a suit, then end the game immediately. He's evil. It's better to go up than to go down. They also say if you die in the game, then you could die in real life. If the guides try to wake you up and you won't wake up, then they have to violently shake you until you wake up. And this is why I say it sounds more like astral projection, because you go into this trance and you don't want to get stuck. It's like your soul leaves your body and goes to another place. Please do not try this, especially if you're inexperienced with astral projection. A lot of people have been asking me to do the candy man. To be honest, I don't know if y'all mean the Candyman Killer or if there's another Candyman that you want me to talk about, but today we're going to talk about the Candyman Killer. Dean Arnold Coral, also known as the Candyman Killer, kidnapped, tortured, and murdered at least 28 people. His first victim was a young man who he picked up hitchhiking. In 1970, Dean picked up a young man named Jeffrey Conan when he was hitchhiking, gave him some candy when he drove Jeffrey back to his home. When they arrived at their destination, Dean hit Jeffrey over the head, knocking him unconscious. It's said that he repeatedly tortured Jeffrey and took advantage of him before finally ending his life. During this murder, somebody actually walked in on Dean. A young man named David Owen Brooks walked in on Dean committing this crime. Dean bribed to keep him quiet by buying him a brand new Chevrolet Corvette. And he'd go on to kill 27 more people. Follow for part two. The Candyman Killer part two. On December 13th, 1970, Dean lured two 14 year old boys, James Glass and Danny Yates away from their religious rally that they were participating in to his apartment. They were both tied to opposite ends of a board and tortured, taken advantage of, and ultimately killed. Dean hid their remains in the boat shed out back. 
On January 30th, 1971, Dean and Brooks, the guy who had originally walked in on Dean doing the first murder, Brooks has now become somewhat of an accomplice. They were driving down a road when they encountered two teenage brothers walking home. Dean ended up enticing the boys into his van. It's always a van. <laughs> like, why is it always a van? He took the boys to his apartment where he did pretty much the exact same thing he had done to the other boys. He tortured them, took advantage of them, and then killed them. All the while still bribing Brooks into staying quiet with expensive gifts and luxury vehicles. Follow for part three. The Candyman Killer part three. So Dean killed those two brothers and put them also in the shed out back. Between March and May of that same year, 1971, Dean abducted and killed three other teenagers. Later that year, on August 17th, Dean and Brooks encountered a 17-year-old boy named Reuben Watson Haney, and they also had their way with him and disposed of him in the boat shed out back. By this time, the boat shed out back's getting pretty full of bodies. I mean, it's piling up, hunty. But Dean is still getting away with everything. No one suspects him at this point. From here until 1973, Dean would abduct and kill several more people, all between the ages of 13 and 20, all with the help of Brooks and one other accomplice. On August 3rd, 1973, Dean killed his last victim, a 13-year-old boy named James Stanton Draymala. He was also put in the boat shed. Follow for part four. 